Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm not going to waste too much of your time. You might be here for a specific topic that you saw in the thumbnail. If you could make out anything in the thumbnail, you might be here for all the topics. But I am putting them all in chapters so that it'll be easier for you to navigate if you want to go to whatever thing. I really appreciate it if you look at the whole thing though, but I understand. It's just a lot of stuff. These are all topics that I actively wanted to fuss about because I wanted to. Some of them affect me, some of them don't. Some of them are just random ass shits that make me feel upset that I just wanted to fuss about and I needed to get it out of my head so that hopefully it will be out of my head completely and I don't have to think about it no more, right? I'm a spiritual channel, I'm a uh, vlog channel, I talk about the stuff that has to do with me, but I really just wanted to get it out and I like making videos like this and this seemed like a really good topic or set of topics to do that. If you don't know who I am, my name is Spiri. I'm an artist, animator, and professional memory collector. If you do know who I am, then hi! It's good to see you again and thank you so much for being here. But yeah, just click on whatever chapter that you want to go to for the different things. I'm going to go on ahead and talk about the first thing that makes me upset and that I want to fuss about. Why is it so crowded? Why is everybody out? Why is it so crowded? Why? Why is it? Why? 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 problem can be a problem everywhere it's not just exclusive to where I live at I'm not sure how bad it is in comparison to how bad it is over here there's just so many warehouses there's so many new apartments there's so many new homes or neighborhoods that the homes are being built in the area that I am in used to be very very rural or small or didn't have anything crazy going on right the most fun that you could have really in a general area would be to go to the outlet mall or to go fuck around at the grocery store or the Walmart nearby and things like that. There wasn't really much to do. And that was when I was in like high school. My family would tell me how before I was in high school there was less than that. There wasn't an outlet mall. There wasn't restaurants and other random places and stuff to go to. It was just the grocery store and things like that. Definitely let me know like if you feel like your area is getting crowded where you're at. It just feels very crowded over here and they just keep building new and more stuff. Just a lot of stuff. They're still building stuff. Like every time I go out there's more stuff being built. The good thing about there being more stuff is that now there's more things for people to go out and do. There's a lot of activities you can go to. There's a lot of places besides just the mall or a restaurant or whatever to check out. But they have other cool stuff in the general area that's way closer. Before I would probably have to go to Atlanta or to a further out like 30-45 minutes away from where I live to go anywhere fun. 30-45 minutes if I was lucky. But now it's like, oh, I have all these places that I can go to to hang out and vibe and have a good time and eat and I have a variety, it's nice. The bad thing is that now it takes about the same amount of time to get to those places if I'm not up at the ass crack of dawn or even just in the at nine o'clock. Even though there's more places and they're closer, it still feels about the same distance away because it takes so long to get there because of traffic. And traffic is a pain. Traffic is a pain. I didn't realize it until I started going outside of my area more that it takes forever to get outside of my area. Like I'm in traffic stuck in this city until I get to the next city and don't even try to do nothing at like 5 or 6 p.m. That's just done for. Mid midday, anything like that, not worth it. Not worth the drive. No, no, no. We're coming to my big, 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 big gripe, which is stop building warehouses. I'm tired of them. I see six of them. There's like six of them that live nearby me. They're ugly. It makes me physically hurt when I see that they get chopped, the trees get chopped down for more warehouses as if there isn't another warehouse right down the road. If you're going to build them, why are they next door to each other? Is that like a, is there a purpose for that? I just don't understand and if it's just going to be one big clump of warehouses over here, what do we need a whole nother big clump of warehouses over there for? It's a bunch of, I just don't get it. And if you just, if you're going to cut down trees and 
lay down land and everything like that. Can you make it something pretty? Can you make it something a little bit more useful? I'm just tired of the warehouses, bro. I'm very, very tired of them. They make me upset because I'll see the land and I'll see what it used to be before a warehouse took it over and it just looks ugly. It's horrible. And I think I talked about this before in another video of just like you got to take pictures and make the moment last because you never know if it's going to be there. It hurts because I really do think that the plots of land that I drive by that have a bunch of trees and really nice scenery and things like that are going to be there forever because it's scenery. Why would it not? <sighs> but then I am rudely mistaken when they add another warehouse to it and it's just ugh. I'm just hurt. I'm hurt. I don't like that they get rid of the trees for it. I don't I just wish that they would build something else for it. I don't want anybody to try to reason with me on why warehouses could be useful or are useful. I understand. Get your bag. I'm not mad at you if you work at a warehouse. I used to work at one. I couldn't do it. So kudos to you if you do. Can we paint them or something? Can we make them not like an eyesore? Can we make them not such a pain? If you're going to get rid of the beautiful scenery to just add a beige building or white building, can we make it something different? I pass them all the time. I pass them every time I go out of the vicinity. They're there and it just makes me hurt. It makes me sad, especially when I know the the stuff that used to be there before the warehouse, you know? It just hurts. It sucks. But I understand. I don't care if it's useful. I really don't because it still makes me sad seeing them. I feel like there's other ways to be useful, but whatever. The places that used to take like 5-10 minutes to get to take about 20 30 minutes to get to if you're lucky like i said like you really have to leave early in the morning to beat the traffic otherwise you're just going to be chilling in traffic for the most part and it's crazy because all the traffic is coming because people are getting jobs at the warehouses or that they're getting houses near the warehouses that they have a job at so i understand like the population is growing a little bit more in this area for the other issues that i have with it being too crowded i just hate that i have to get up so early if i want to avoid traffic or i just have to suck it up that i'm going to go through traffic another thing about traffic but if i tried to go out to atlanta and it's the middle of the day expect it to be an hour and 30 minutes tops for me to make it to the general area because there's still more fun things to do in atl than in the area that i'm at right if i go at like 10 p.m or even 9 p.m on a regular day uh it might take 40 minutes so it's just really interesting how much traffic adds to time and traffic is so crazy and it's just getting worse and worse and worse and i don't I don't know what to do with it. It's just so, ooh, it's so, it's so much. I, I know that there's not really much that I can do about it other than to just suck it up because the whole, it feels like it's a cycle. It feels like it's a cycle of people go to this rural or further out into the outskirts area. They build stuff there. They sometimes, they might complain that it takes 30 minutes to get to this area because we're so far out, da, 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 da. So then they start slowly building more things over there, more restaurants, more shops, more stores, more this, this, and that, more warehouses. So then it becomes less stranded or distant or blank, basically. And more people start moving over there because they're trying to flee the crowdedness that is in their area, right? So they go over here because it's not so crowded. It's very distant and everything like that and then more and more people start doing that until the distant chill spot that wasn't so crowded is suddenly overcrowded like i said the place that i stayed at started out small people start going to these places trying to start small and it gets huge so now it's huge there's stuff here that didn't used to be here whatsoever and it's crazy every time i go out and see new things change is inevitable that's kind of all that it is to it but good god do we need 20 warehouses? It comes back to that in my brain. Do we need 20 warehouses? Is that necessary? Do we need that? Do we need that? That just seems like it's the cycle. And at some point people will start to move away from where I'm at to go to some other seemingly less crowded area and it will slowly become more crowded. And the cycle will repeat. It's a good thing that I don't like get crazy about traffic. I don't start getting upset or claustrophobic or anything about being inside of a car, thankfully. And I've gotten a little bit more numbed to traffic, which I don't know if, if that's a good thing. I don't know if that's a good thing. But anyway. <laughs> uh, 
At least when I'm stuck in traffic, I can safely listen to my music in my car with my trusty car thing. Oh, uh, wait. <laughs> I just thought it would be cute for me to be in my car while I'm talking about my car thing. Give me a second, let me bring you over here. Car thing, which is uh, magnetically connected to the thing on my car. I don't know why they made it that name. Please look at the video that I made talking about the motherfucking thing when I first got it because I think it's hilarious. It wasn't the best product review in the world, but it sure it was just fucking hilarious. Now, I may be considered a Spotify dick rider for having a car thing. Before I fuss about this, it should be known that Spotify like just made the worst decision ever so much so that a lot of people complained about it enough people for them to take back what their idea was so the car thing not working anymore we don't got to worry about no more so that's great however i still need to get the energy out about how stupid of an idea it was for them to even do that i love my car thing it's great because i have an old car that doesn't have already a touch screen which i'm sure you guys have seen the drew gooden video talking about cars and i don't like how they have big screens either that's why i'm always gonna just uh, uh, just stick to older cars plus they're easier to work on for your mechanics or and you don't have to worry about the freaking um and all this other shit so anyway I, i'm going to stick with this and this makes it way easier for me to go through my songs without looking at my phone because that's dangerous and it's illegal so it's just really lame that they were deciding like oh yeah we're gonna brick all of the car things for whatever fucking reason i don't know maybe it wasn't making them enough money i don't know but they said they were gonna do that and be like oh but you can use you can use the car view on your phone when it's not even like allowed for me to have my phone in my hand i have to put it on the whatchamacallit it has to be hands free and i'm looking this is easier my car thing is easier but then i found out when people were worried or realized or thinking that the um car thing was gonna be bricked they started being like shit i'm gonna customize my car thing i didn't know people were customizing it but it's such a simple software there isn't anything going on on it i guess it's just a screen that's showing what's going on on your phone people were putting it on their desktops and with their computer set up and everything and i was just like hmm that's interesting that people are using the car thing for things other than motor vehicles i was just like wow but anyway, it was just the level of confusion and annoyance that I got from seeing seeing them say that they were just going to make it stop. But I was about to pay some money for somebody to customize my car thing to make it do some cute ass shit. Because yeah, my car has wonky speakers in this one, but I can use my regular speaker, which connects to my phone, which I can control with my car thing. Innovation. Wonderful. It's great. I was so worried when they said they were going to get rid of it, so I'm glad they're keeping it. Good lord. I think you can add stuff to your queue now, but I haven't tried that because, again, I'm driving. I really just be swiping songs till I get to the one that I want to listen to. And you can just swipe, 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 and that's easy, and I love that. I love knobs. I love all the buttons that tell me what stuff does. No touch screen, no touch screen. I know I sound like an old lady, but it's like, on my car, on my car specifically, no, none of that. It needs to be easy. The thing that really pissed me off is them expecting us to dispose of it, like, on our own. Knowing goddamn well nobody was going to do that and they were just going to throw it in the trash. I was really trying to think of, oh my god, it's just going to stay in my car and be dead. Or I was going to figure out somebody to go and customize it and do cool stuff. But I just thought it was really janky for them to not even have any sort of assistance on how to dispose of these properly. Because now this is just a waste to be a waste. And what for? What the fuck? That was really lame. I'm just glad that more people were seeing it as an option to customize it instead of just tossing it out or trying to do something to repurpose it. That makes me happy because it's like, yeah, that's crazy. I think it said like three million. I don't know. It was something in the millions of people have car things. And that's crazy to me. 
because wow i guess we're all spotify dick riders and while we're talking about spotify fuck them for not paying music artists enough. When I saw the percentage that they were saying that they get from one listen or one play or one stream, whatever the fuck, it doesn't make any sense. How are you taking almost $12 away from me? Damn near, it's basically 12, it's only a cent away. Every month, and you don't have enough money to give to a musical artist who be making bops. Why are they not getting paid? Why are they not getting paid? Pay the musicians more, bro. I remember when Spotify used to be $9.99. Why y'all think you work? If you don't, if you don't lower the price before I go find my iPod Shuffle and put music back on that shit again, I'll get my portable CD player before I start paying more than $12 for this shit. I love my car thing. It's just fun for me. I'm in my specific, very needy situation. I don't know if it would be fun for everybody else. But, I mean, a lot of people were upset about it, other than me, so... Overall, I do appreciate my car thing, and it makes stuff easier for me while listening to music while driving. I'm patiently waiting for them to add a feature that plays movies and shows on screen like I'm in my own personal drive-in theater. Now playing the American Society of Magical Negroes. Magical what now? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was scared to watch either of these. I still have not looked at the Good Times reboot. I've watched a bunch of videos talking about it. I've looked at a couple of clips here and there so that I could use this footage in this video. But even just from all of that, I can kind of safely say I don't want to watch it. And I'm just not gonna watch it. It's not worth my time and energy. Especially we are here for a short amount of time. I don't want to spend it on that shit, okay? The other one the magical negroes thing I, I started it i got like 20 or so minutes in i think like right at the dot and i just couldn't take it anymore i felt like this wasn't something that i should subject myself to by myself it was something that i should subject me and my friends to as a drinking game if you knew about this movie and it didn't come from me and you just already knew it was a thing i'm sorry um, if you didn't know it was a thing, I'm also sorry because you could have went your whole life not knowing it was a thing, huh? I was scared to watch any of these things, so just kind of take that with a grain of salt that I didn't look at the movie all the way through, and I didn't look at the reboot at all past what I could see on YouTube. I just don't think that it's worth my energy. I can just get an icky vibe from both of them from a mile away. I just really don't know if I need to consume the, inf the, the the stuff in it just for me to come to that conclusion, you know? It's just how I feel, so take that, take that into account. I'm just mad. I'm just mad because they had a chance to make absolute bangers. An, an animated good times? An animated good times? Reboot? That could be something. That could be really great. That could be motivational and inspirational to so many people, for a new generation of people even and they just were like, no, we're not doing that. We're gonna make a new Cleveland show. The Magical Negroes movie, they could have A, turned that into the Key and Peele skit on like instantly. It would have been a classic in my opinion. Or B, they could have made it Black Hogwarts. Let us, let us like have fantasy worlds and things like that and not have to think about white tears or white fragility or trying to keep the status quo between black and white people. Can we just, stop it they had a chance and they didn't do it and it just makes me upset that's the thing that like sparks the anger for me of like these could have been potentially really good ideas and they just said nah we're gonna be racist we're gonna be we're gonna be weird about it we're gonna be really weird about it in the american society thing i looked at the trailer for it i got more research on it and i found out that the term magical negro is a tv and movie trope from back in the day it means supporting black character who comes to the aid of white protagonists in a film so with that premise or with that known i could really see that this could be a potentially good idea for a movie character who gets magical powers and is put in a position where he has to help the white protagonist but wants to do his own thing that could be interesting breaks the idea of what a magical whatchamacallit is you know we can just try to get rid of this stigma so i just really think that it's dumb that they just kind of play 110 percent into that with the whole thing of like oh their powers are based off of the white tears or the 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 proximity of black and white people together i didn't really get the whole premise of it but if they don't 
like do stuff to make white people feel more comfortable than their powers get messed up and it's like who wrote this who wrote this on top of that come on detective pikachu guy i can't remember your name but you've been in some other stuff and i really appreciate your work what did they pay you what did they pay you to do this they had to have been paying you a bunch did they not give you the script did they not give you the script before they told you that you were going to be on this? But uh, did they not tell you the name? Did they hide the name before you got on this movie? So many things wrong with the movie in my opinion. And I, again, I've only looked at 20 minutes of it, but I just don't think it was worth it. And it's a rom-com at that. I didn't even know it was a rom-com until I looked at the trailer. I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, we're not doing this right. We're not, this is a, this is a fumble. This is a fumble. I think we could have really made this really cool. And no, we made this really stupid. I was hoping, I was writing the notes for this and I was hoping that they would add some special effects or go really crazy with them. At the very least to the extent of other magical movies and shows that I've seen in my time. And it wasn't really given that. It wasn't really doing that much at all. And I was really sad about that. Once I started, at least from the extent that I saw, it was just very much simple special effects movie magic things like that nothing really crazy and there were no wizard fights to the point that i saw i really would have liked to have seen some wizard fights tell me if there were wizard fights in the magical negroes movie and i might continue to watch it so i can see the fight or just send me a clip of the fight if there weren't any fights in it though just don't even bother talking to me about it okay i just i'm still really confused about why the whole plot kind of revolves around romance where's the magic don't tell me that the romance is the magic. I don't believe that shit. Where's the magic? If you guys are magicians and can do random ass shit and make stuff appear and this, this, and that, where is it? Show it. But the closest that I got to that was just parlor tricks or trick of the eye things, you know? It's just really, it's just really sad. I was really bummed. And that was part of the reason why I stopped watching it, because I felt like, okay, this really is a waste of my time. I'm not even getting anything visually appealing about this shit. I wrote a point that said, it feels like the love triangle of a magical guy helping a normal guy, but having a crush on the normal guy's love interest would be a great premise for a movie, just not this one, you know? This, it wasn't, it wasn't for this one. Sucks that the magic revolves around racism and white tears. Sucks that it can't just be a high fantasy movie with a predominantly black cast. Sucks how awkward it made me feel any moment one of the black characters was de-escalating a situation between themselves and white people. That was a moment that like kept happening or, and then they even got to a point where they were showcasing the best of of when a black person was de-escalating a situation with them and a white person or motivating a white person and it just made me very uncomfortable because this is something that they teach black people it is something that i was taught or conditioned to believe in things like that that we have to act a certain way around white people or other non-black people in order to make sure that we're safe and okay and they like really hammer this point home a lot of the times with the situations that they get the characters into and stuff like that and it's just like i don't want to keep reliving that oh but now the person has magic so it makes it easier to navigate or something like it made me uncomfortable seeing that one of the moments that made me the most uncomfortable and was like my strike two and a half borderline three i'm giving you one more chance but you don't deserve it this white man is complaining that the war is taking a lot out of him making him underperform with his wife he feels like he's not much of a man because he can't do stuff with his wife right he's complaining and venting about this stuff and he's venting to this black man who is going to be the magical negro of this situation he gives him a motivational speech about how he is a man and how he did all of this stuff and how his wife would be happy to have him as a man and things like that and then he cups his balls he cups his balls he like grabs them and it fills the dude with determination and he's good. So I just had to stop watching. The thing that finally took me out, I was still like holding out hope of like, okay, maybe, maybe it'll be okay. Cause I hadn't even got to the romance part of the movie yet was when the main character and the magic guy that introduces him to the society are talking and he says the whole thing. I think it's in the trailer too. What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? Sure. White people, when they feel uncomfortable. Come on. Come on. A society of magical black people? 
a society of magical black people and this is what we're doing with it. A society of magical black people. Black people that can do magical things. And they're in a secret society. And this is what we're doing. Okay, cool. Whatever. That's why y'all sucked at the box office, I bet you. Also, because who the fuck is going to say, mm, two tickets for American Society for Magical Negroes, please, and not feel uncomfortable? And I get that they're trying to show that the main character is attempting to break that stereotype and to do his own thing. I'm not sure if at the end of the movie that he, like, breaks that stereotype or if he does what they say because if he does then that messes up the entire society or something like that i think they lose their powers if he doesn't make the white person happy basically uh it's i understand but we could just do something else again society secret society of magical black people and this is what you're giving us Really? And back to the title, again, I wrote, what exactly is the point in calling it that if not just for shock value and controversy? Because again, who is saying this? I can say this around my mom and my grandparents and my family and things like that. I can say this around my friends to a certain extent, but they're all looking at me sideways of who, who, 2024. And again, a lot of people, when I tell them about this movie, they think that it came out years ago. No. Nope. It came out in March of this year! And I understand that they're just trying to show the whole trope that that term comes from. Ooh, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Key and Pill was doing the same thing of trying to show the trope of where that term comes from. And they did a better job than y'all. And they didn't even make it into a movie. It was a whole skit. It was, that was it. Please go look at the skit. It's hilarious. But it just gives that same vibe of, yes, a black person comes in and is in the eight. Like, they're doing that. We could have... I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. No, I put... I wrote down the whole thing about the dude cupping... The black man cupping the white guy's balls. I made that a point. And it was just like, I don't know if it was for moral support. I'm not really sure why we had to show that. I'm not really sure why it had to have been done. But... I, I did chuckle a little bit, like if they were trying to do it as a joke, I did laugh a little bit at the absurdity of this big black man cupping this guy's balls. And he did it with like, just like he got in there, he did that. And I was just like... After watching this movie, I can safely say that I didn't necessarily have a bad time, but not really a good time either. I need something to refresh. Cleanse my eyes. I know, I'll watch Good Times. My first point with the whole Good Times thing that I put was can black people in the entertainment industry have some level of dignity for themselves or is the paycheck that much of a positive incentive to have your name anywhere near affiliated with these projects? Especially like there's a lot of famous popular actors that are in both the Magical Negroes movie and the Good Times reboot that I'm just really confused about like why they're there. Did they see something in these projects that I couldn't see as a consumer? Did they see money signs or something that I just didn't see. I just don't understand. Was the bag worth it? Is that what it was for? Did you think that this was a good thing to do? I just don't get it. I wrote down everybody who I'm upset with. Why did you have to do this to me, Yvette? Wanda? Why did you have to do this to me, Cree Summers? Cree Summers is the voice director and plays different roles in this show. I'm very butthurt that she's on Good Times. This Good Times reboot. They got my poor number five in this bullshit. My poor Cree in this bullshit. Going into Cree Summers, her interview, her interview, oh my God, made me upset. I started getting more upset about the show. She says to keep an open mind about the show. Listen, Cree, if you watching this, if you watching this by some stroke of random luck, you're watching this, you're gonna have to pay me money to make me watch that shit, okay? I don't, I don't know. I can only open my mind. I'm an open-minded motherfucker. I can't open my mind anymore for this, okay? I just can't, I just can't. I love you so much, Cree. You just gonna have to pay me to watch this. I love you so much. I love your work so much. 
I wish I could just take your word for it but I really don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I really just don't. It really does just come off as like another Cleveland show. Like right down to the way that there's a baby, a brother and a sister and a mom and a dad. Like it has the full combo meal of just the whole, the whole family. And they act that same way, they do the same shit. It's just really crazy. I don't wanna watch it. I didn't like Cleveland show, I didn't like that. I thought it was dumb and I feel like it was very obvious that it was written by people that just don't know the black experience. I don't know about this with good times. I don't know who wrote this, but I would not be surprised if it was somebody that just has not 100% lived that experience or they're okay with just throwing that away for some stupid shit and stereotypes. It feels like even more of a slap in the face though because they are trying to say it is a good times reboot. They are taking the name of something beloved well loved not just in the black community but so many other people see it as a well written really good show really good sitcom really informative sitcom and they're taking the name of that and putting it on this shit i just don't get it if y'all had just made like a random black family thing i'm sure people wouldn't be as upset about this being a thing but no you had to call it good times you had to make it have some sort of lineage with the family in that show and all of that stuff it's just even no also it's ugly it's like really really ugly more specifically reggie in that show is very ugly i'm not really sure he looks like a trash can to me he looks like his mouth is gonna open up and down and i'm not sure if that's mean he's a cartoon character but he looks ugly everything in the show looks really ugly they don't animate everything like it just feels kind of like an animatic at some points they just kind of decide to not animate certain parts they don't even get from point a to point b sometimes they just do it's very choppy i'm not sure if that's a stylistic choice but it doesn't come off that great it feels like you rush this shit i'm not really sure why adult cartoons have to keep being ugly or just poorly created as if adults don't deserve just high quality cartoons too you know what i mean the title or the description that they use for one of the characters the baby is drug dealing infant son you can repeat that you can you can rewind i don't mind that's what they use that's what they that's what they describe him as and you want me to watch this show and i know i said remake and the thing and stuff like that but i i understand that this is a reboot they're just trying to do their own thing some sort of spin-off thing i get that i understand that why though if this was just some random set of uh of a black family and no connection or anything to good times this would probably be flown under the radar and done normal maybe other people would have stuff to say about the topics that they address and everything but at least not so many people are going to be up in arms that you're trying you're just you're just really shitting on good times you really are damn near every comment under the trailer for it was saying something against it or negative about it except this one that i found saying that people have to give it a chance because it does talk about the different issues in black culture, growing up in the ghetto and things of that nature. But the thing is, so did the original Good Times. It talks about all of these different things in a nuanced, informative way. And there's so many clips, there's so many episodes, there's so many things that you can gather from the original Good Times that is doing all of the stuff that you're claiming you can see in this Good Times reboot. I just don't know how far you can say that this is satire before it just turns into you you're shitting on us you're just being a dickhead about the the tropes and the stereotypes that are going on in the black communities and i get that we're in different times and people can say and do more vulgar things but just because we can does that really mean that we should is that really going to help anybody if we're just making a cleveland show remake of the good times are we really helping people it's just really sad to see that i really think if you want if you want to look at something that has satire look at the boondocks if you want to look at something that has substance and will teach you morals and different stuff going on and how it is in the black community look at the original good times it's not going to kill you to look at an old show i don't know that's all i have to say on that shit okay 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 maybe that was on me for stepping out of my comfort zone to watch stuff when i could have watched youtube videos yeah, you can feel it. Feel it, baby. Oh, feel it. That's the word. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's here. What's up? Hello. What it is, a little BBL or something? Nah, baby. It's is natural. it real? Yeah. Let me see. Make it do something real quick.
You ever had with no gag reflex? You want to find out real quick? Yes. Right now? Are you sure you ready? I'm so serious. Are you? you Come on. I'll be back. Come on, baby. Hey, just keep, keep the mic. So like, why do 20v1 videos exist? I know that maybe the clips that I put at the start of it might have not been from specific 20v1 stuff, but any of just like the dating things, why are they a thing and why do they get so messy so quickly so weird so quickly you know i wrote these videos are so goddamn gross bro like how do you watch them how do you all participate in them how 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 like this was the kind of stuff that i would probably see my middle school and high school classmates talking about in school and i'm like seeing like it has to be made it has to be made with that in mind it has to be made with these kids in mind or with a younger audience in mind, which is really lame. That's so lame. Why are we showing that to younger impressionable minds? And I wrote, if the audience is predominantly younger, why add scams into these videos for them to see? I was doing like looking into it more and sometimes they'll show stuff that's like a giveaway or some sort of scammy-esque thing. And if the audience is just already known to be young, why are you doing that? Why are you showing that to them? When I was doing more research though, I found out that there's sometimes kids, I think they did it once, there's kids on these. It's painful to watch. It's really sad to watch. I saw a clip, the boy that was being the one versus the 20 was interviewed by the host and he asked him like, what's your type? And the little boy, he couldn't have been like, what was he like? nine ten i don't know he looked little but he was just like i like light-skinned girls light-skinned girls and it's just really really tiring and makes me really really sad that they're actual children being put on this stuff and shown this stuff i wouldn't say that this stuff is setting us back but that that right there of having a child and other children participating in this stuff is where i feel icky about it I just, I feel like we're hurting the next generation for no reason other than views, clout, and money. It, it, it feels like you're aging the kids up in their brain for them to even like, they're not supposed to be thinking about dating or what their type is or any of that kind of stuff. They are supposed to be thinking about well, who's, who's their favorite Pokemon that's coming out? What's going on with the, with the different toys and trends and things like that going on? Kids don't need to be trying to grow up so fast in the sense of being in a lineup with a bunch of other kids trying to get the attention of another kid. That is going to set them up with so much self-esteem issues if they don't already have them. And it's also like, whose parents? Where are the parents? Where are the parents? Did they just not understand that this is what they were signing up to put their kids onto? This is just not okay to me. And I really do think that it's bad because again, kids are supposed to be kids. Please just let the kids be kids. Please just let them do their thing and experience life at their own pace and not try to accelerate it by putting them in these weird ass situations. It's just really weird. Don't give them that stuff. Kids come out of here, come out the woodwork, not even knowing what it means to have a type or any or sort sort of preference or anything like that. So why, or colorism even, just by being like, I prefer light skin. I don't want no dark skin, da 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 da. If I heard my siblings saying stuff like that, I don't know what I would do. I would feel some type of way about it. It's not okay. Giving them dating drama and shit that will make them self-conscious over time is very, it's very, very painful to see. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's already bad for adults. So you trying to put that kind of stuff on a child? On a child? Don't you feel weird? And I heard that that video that has the kids on it, uh, the comments got turned off of it because a lot of people were saying the same thing that I'm saying of just like, leave the kids out of it. Why are you bringing kids into this? This isn't okay. I, I hate to be that person that's all like, sex is sacred. You have to be mindful while you're doing that activity with someone, especially someone you don't know. But it's the truth. Really, really, sex is whatever you want to make it. It's whatever you want it to be. It's whatever is what two consenting, two or more, I guess, two or more consenting adults are cool with, right? It's okay. But I just, I just really thought that we were all on the same page of not like putting out just any fucking wear with any fucking body at any point. 
I could not imagine being in a position where I'm single, looking for love, looking for love. I don't think these people are looking for love, but whatever. And willingly letting somebody put their finger inside me. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? I don't know where your hand has been. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what kind of stuff is going on. Like we just don't care about getting STDs or getting sick. We just go and suck any person's dick and finger anybody's pussy. That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're cool with doing. In my brain can't fathom doing anything like that because I know just from COVID alone, how many people don't even wash their fucking hands when they come back home from work or from other stuff. You know what I mean? People. A, they feel like relationships are just kind of a bust or that we're doomed in terms of relationships because they see stuff like this and think that that's common. Or B, the standards are so low, the expectations are so low that when somebody isn't doing something like this, they're seen as perfect or ideal or that's the best and stuff like that. And that's sad because this is literally bottom of the barrel shit to typically be like, oh yeah, you're not gonna put out uh on the first i wouldn't even consider these dates this is like introduction this is hi my name is oh oh my name is oh here's my pussy kind of thing this 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 is not a first date but everybody just it, it just oh she doesn't put out at the introduction or she's not being doing this at the introduction of it or he wasn't asking me about my ass or wasn't asking me about what i can do with my mouth at the first start of us meeting or when we first matched on whatever thing right that's that's bottom of the barrel low bar shit okay like that's that's normal not seen as more of a pedestal but i promise you this is not a sign or showing of how people are in the real world who want a real connection if you go out there trying to look for a real connection i promise you you'll find it it's just probably not going to be on shows like this because I don't think anybody here is looking for a real connection. I think they're looking for clout, maybe somebody cute to fuck for a couple of months, maybe, and then go about their business. They're probably waiting for something to pop off so that they can have their own little 15 minutes of fame or something like that. But I do not think anybody is trying to look for a genuine connection with these kinds of situations, right? I said, it is hard for me to not put my tinfoil hat on as I ask questions about why is this what's showed to us online? Why is this what drives engagement? It comes back, it goes to the whole thing that gets pointed out in a lot of the other topics that I'm talking about in this video, that it's engagement. It is something appalling or something crazy or something upsetting or something surprising that is getting views. And when they see that that's what's gonna happen, they just push it out more. It just sucks that this is what's being shown to us, especially when a lot of people are like, this is not what I would want, ideally. I don't want my girl doing this. I don't want my future relationship to be like this. It's just, no. I asked, is this any different from the assortment of other dating theme shows out there on television, though? And I said, in a way, yes, because it seems like they get way more out of hand online than they do on TV. But I could be wrong because it's been a minute since I've looked at any sort of reality TV shows. I don't really care for them. I don't much like them. Other than that, I guess they are kind of the same. Like the premise is still kind of the same. So that would explain why I don't like these and I don't like reality TV shows. The only one that gets a pass is probably The Baggage. It's a fun little show, but again, I'm pretty sure it's like most of that shit is scripted to some degree. But again, and I don't think there's that much different. One of the clips that me and my partner were looking at, the chick just started belly dancing out of nowhere. So it just kind of gives me the same vibes of people flaunting and showing off their physical attributes like we're birds or something. I'm trying to attract a mate. It's just really sad. It's really sad. The people on these videos can't possibly be looking for love or long lasting love. Like I said, it's probably somebody like if they're looking for anything, it's just probably a quickie or fame or attraction to the because I know there's sometimes celebrities on there. So they might be trying to just like get something with the celebrity or the popular person or influencer. I don't know, but it can't be that they're looking for true love or romance of any kind. And that's okay. If you're not looking for that, I'm not trying to say that you have to, but it's just like, this is a huge price to pay for something little like clout. You know what I mean? Could you imagine a kid asking their dad how he met their mother and he goes, oh yeah, I picked her out of a lineup of 19 other girls and she was the one who was throwing ass the best. We've been married ever since. Can you imagine that? No, because it would never happen. It would never happen. I just, I just really, really want to hammer this point home. No publicity 
has to be better than I got fingered on the set of a YouTube video publicity, okay? I just, I just really feel like that's not rocket science, right? Like I would rather be totally unknown to the world than to be known as that person that got fingered on the set of a YouTube video. I'm just saying, please, I beg, please think about your options. Think about what comes with trying to farm clout in this really weird, obscene way, okay? Like, what are you going to do if somebody that you try to work for sees this shit? I haven't even touched on that, on who could see this stuff and where is that going to land you in your future? You can call me a party pooper. You can call me a pick me, call me whatever. I just really don't think that this is okay and that's okay for me to not think it's okay. Just like, I guess it's okay for them to continue doing this stuff. Keep the kids out of it though. That's never gonna be okay with me. That's really fucking weird. That is again, all I can think about is my siblings being involved in that and how fucked up that would be and I just don't like that don't do that don't do that keep your weird shit over there with consenting adults I guess while I'm begging though please 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 please, please stop calling this side of YouTube black YouTube I see it all the time whenever people want to talk about 20 v1 stuff or the balloon popping ones or whatever the stuff is they keep calling it black youtube i saw a video by pillboy talking about how there is no black youtube stop calling it that stop putting that label on that because it's just messing with everybody else in the long run calling it that ain't nobody else calling it that but other black people in my opinion stop calling it that stop calling it that that's not what this is i've even seen 20 v1s with people that aren't in the black community so just stop this isn't black YouTube. There is no black YouTube as a matter of fact. It sucks that this kind of stuff is promoted and shown. Sucks that they use dumb stereotypes or play into rigid relationship expectations, but it's not all that is available to black viewers and creators. I just don't like that that's being put into the category of, oh, that's black YouTube. Oh, that's black YouTube. Can we not? Can this not be like what we're known for as black YouTube. I would love for black YouTube to just be YouTube, but there's black creators. Can we just, can that just be what that is? Can that just be what that is? Is that so hard to ask for? Look at that video by Pillboy just to elaborate. Like again, even there's no white YouTube. Stop labeling it. Stop labeling it that. Call it what it really is. Weird shit. It's weird shit. I don't think it's setting us back. I don't think it's necessarily, aside from the kids stuff, wrong. It's what they're gonna do. I don't wanna do it. I would never do it, but I just don't want it to be called black YouTube anymore because yeah, this is not stuff. It sucks that they're even showing it to us. It sucks that they see that that's getting a rise out of everybody, but at some point it won't anymore and we'll just run its course and go into the next what the fuck moment, you know? It's really weird and it makes me concerned for just like the future of anybody trying to look for a relationship. It's really weird. It's really weird and it makes me bummed that that is the kind of stuff that they just keep showing to us, that it is the kind of stuff that rappers go on, that famous influencers go on and stuff like that to just go and demean mean and be superficial and looking at all the things that don't fucking matter like oh my god wow her ass claps really loud assuming that you guys make it to like 30 years of being happily together or whatever but i just doubt it but do you think it's still gonna clap 30 years from now is that what's gonna make you break up with her because her ass don't clap like it used to when she was 20 like it's just very superficial stuff kind of in the same way that i wish that the American society thing, the movie and the good times thing could be stuff for black people to have fun, an animated show that will have fun, uh, a magical movie that has a predominantly black cast that is fun. I wish that we could have dating games that are fun. Why aren't we asking like thought provoking questions or trying to get to know the person or playing little games here and there to see who cracks under pressure and things like that? I don't know. I, I just wish it was different, but I understand that this is what is garnering views right now. I wanna stop talking about it. If you didn't pick me, you're an asshole. Leave the video right now. You know what, I lied. I'd understand if you picked anybody other than me. The lineup is kind of crazy right now. We got Tuxedo Sam, Rainbow Monkey, Angel Hair, Vincent, something? I'm sorry, the lineup is insane. And then me? I'm sorry, the lineup is insane. So I understand if you had a hard time picking. All right, no more entertainment.
Let me just order some more stickers to put on my shop. I think I'll get some more from Sticker Mule. Sticker Mule. What was that, Sticker Mule? Sticker Mule political discourse. Donald Trump was shot. I don't care what your political uh, views are, but the hate for Trump and his supporters has gone too far. People are... So I talked about this a little bit in one of my slogs, which are my studio logs or spiritual logs, however you want to see them, but I didn't want to go into great detail on it in those videos because I wanted to save it for here where I'm talking about it now. I've gotten stickers from this company before. I would only do it through the little discount things that they would send in the mail or in the emails. The assassination attempt, the first one, the very first one attempt on him happened two days, two days after I bought another set of stickers from them. And I think it was these. And I guess that'll segue us into me showing you some of my stickers. Why am I talking to you about stickers? And then it's leading into me talking about a Trump assassination attempt. You see where the first little issue is? That's the first issue for me at least. And so after that happened, the CEO of Sticker Mule, the company that I get my stickers from, or got some of them from, put out a statement. But in multiple locations, he sent one through the email, he sent one through Twitter, he sent one on Instagram, he sent a link to the Twitter post through the SMS if you were a part of that. He sent it different ways, all kinds of different ways through the sticker mule stuff, his stance on Trump being attempted to be whatchamacallit, you know? I do not believe that anyone should be killed or be in fear of their life based off of their political beliefs. It should never be that deep. It should never ever be that deep. The CEO talking about it, the way that he's talking about it, the CEO saying that countless Trump supporters are scared to say that they're Trump supporters, maybe you can get a taste of how it feels when somebody is scared to say their personal views out of fear of being killed or out of fear of being ridiculed or discriminated. It's the same thing. And all most people want, let's just remove political sides from it because I'm not on, a, I don't, I don't, I don't like politics. I want the government to burn. Don't talk to me about it. That's another reason why I just don't, I have no parts in it. I don't even really fuck with labels. You know what I mean? We're, we're souls in little flesh pockets and all this other stuff. I, I love my body and I love who I am, but I am more than just this. So it's really hard for me to care too much about labels that harshly. I don't care too much. I try, it's hard, it's hard because people, it's even hard for you to not feel representative of uh, where you come from. People get so hyped up if somebody comes from the place that they came from. They're like, or if somebody's like, let's go New York, let's go, let's go Canada, let's go whatever the fuck it is, right, that you're from, people go crazy. That's a label though. People get so attached to that. So for people to get that attached to political stuff that they're fearing for their life and everything like that, I just don't like it. People want it to be that you can be yourself without harming other people and not worrying about being harmed. It's not that hard to understand. So that's something. I don't know if I phrased that well, because again, I'm not really like on the political thing, but I know what's right and I know what's wrong. I know what's morally right and what's morally wrong. And not all the time is the law morally correct or anything like that. There's stupid ass shit that happens all the time. It sucks that he almost died. It sucks that somebody died in the process of that. Why is the sticker mule guy talking about that? Why is he talking about that? Why am I hearing it from him? I don't want his cent two cents on this. I want my stickers. What's going on? So, and it's also just like, he really could have put this on his personal page. He really could have put this with his friends on Facebook or some shit, right? Why are you blasting this on your company page? Being like, Oh, uh, uh, people support Biden work at Sticker Mule too and da 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 da. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I just don't want you to be doing my shit up with the whole thing of, ooh, we need to be nicer to Trump. Not to mention that they were like, ooh, we have a sale going on for t-shirts. Why don't you go get a t-shirt that says how you support Trump on it? No, motherfucker. What are you talking about? Stop that. That's so weird. Stop that. We have to remember where the hatred and the harm and the problems are coming from or where they're being like, 
heavily festering and stuff like that. I don't even really want to get that deep into it now because I'm talking about stickers. Let's chill. We gonna chill. But I'm not trying to sell you shit. It's just if you want it, then you want it, you know? But yeah, baked bread. I'm so funny. Yeah, I just thought it was so funny that he was trying to be like, uh, Biden supporters and Trump supporters work here. I don't care, silly. I don't give a shit. Do, 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 do you guys uh, print stickers? Are you gonna print my stickers? Give me my stickers. Stop talking about this shit. It sucks that it happened, but stop talking about it. Yeah, I don't really care about the political identity or identity in general of a sticker printing company up to a certain extent. Really, I just want good quality stickers. That's all that I want from you. I don't care about your identity. If it, if it makes you happy, then cool. But, oh my God, it feels like you're shoving it down my throat. And at that point, that's just gonna annoy me. I'm not gonna be here for it. I don't want it. We are all souls at the end of the day. And these are just labels that help us relate to one another. It's really funny though, that when he was making all of these posts, it ended up being like a reverse Uno card in a way of just being a promo thing for other sticker companies to be like, hey, we don't support Trump. Here's a discount code if you want to just go ahead and start using us instead. It's the fact that he was trying to be like, hatred is bad. And it's like, okay, who's the one hating? Who's the one hating? Because again, who was the one that shot him? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think he's just a menace. Trump is for Trump. He ain't for nobody else but for him. I'm living my life. I got shit to do. He doesn't even care about me. Why should I care about him? You know? Yeah, I found so many really cool sticker places and other better printing stickers and all of that. I was really happy to do some things with them and figure out what was going on there. Because it's okay, it's, so, it's, it's always great to try something new, you know? Yeah, I think I said all my pieces. Just no politics in my stickers, okay, man? As a matter of fact, are all these pieces of media just rage bait, stuff designed to get a negative reaction out of me? Am I falling for it? <laughs> So, we are now in the time where it has unfortunately become lucrative to be a lazy hater on the internet. It's crazy how much people are haters online. And don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I love me a hater. I love me a hater. I love being a hater. Within reason. Can we do it within reason? For example, I'll see a comment on an Instagram reel that reeks of rage baiting and to my disappointment, there will be hundreds of comments under it showing that the fisherman caught some fish. Some of y'all are running right into the nets and the hooks. That's all I'm trying to say. I wrote, you literally have to see the comment or video as a way to farm engagement. If you see it enough, you'll start to see what's a hook and what's not. It makes me kind of sad when I see folks get snatched up like that episode of SpongeBob from a comment or vid that's clearly trying to bait groups of people. I just try to save my energy for the shit that matters. Like I can't start getting upset and flaring up and trying to like rage type about the stuff going on about this thing that is clearly meant to make me upset. Like it's, it's, it's shown time and time again that we stay on stuff more and we're more interested in stuff when it makes us upset. I wonder if that can be said about this video that you're watching. Did you come here because you wanted to be upset about something? It's okay if you did. I'm upset about everything right now. <laughs> Even in a lot of instances, the people that are fussing or making the rage bait, they don't even care about the topic that they're arguing for. They don't give a shit about the opposing side or the side that they're on. They don't give a shit. They just want you to interact. They just want to make you upset. They just want that. That is their main goal. So they'll say whatever they want, even if it's contradictory to whatever point that they're standing for, to make you upset. That is the whole point. So if you know that that's their goal and it's not to be educated or to talk about the stuff that goes on on their side to educate this other person, if we're not even already meeting at that point, what's the point of me talking to you about it? But this was the main point that I wanted to ask. I wrote it down. Do y'all just get off to arguing? It's okay if you do. It really feels like that. Like, do you just do you just get off to arguing? Like, is it fun to argue and debate your point with someone who clearly doesn't give a shit about the topic at hand? They just want more engagement out of you. Does that does that make you happy? Does that make you passionate? 
or feel something? Is it fun to refresh your page over and over waiting for the other person to say their piece so you can either debunk it or correct their grammar? Is that fun to you playing tennis with the whole thing of just talking about some stupid ass thing? To me it feels like y'all kind of get off to this. I, I, I just can't I can't rationalize any other reason why you guys would be going back and forth other than a you don't know that it's rage bait or b you do know and you're getting off to this like you just want to be upset too it's just sad because the same in reverse can be said i wish that social media i wish that platforms didn't harp so much on ooh we have to make the person angry ooh we want to do rage bait ooh 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 the same can be said in reverse. You can make someone happy and they'll stay on the app longer. You can make someone feel good things and they'll stay on the app. So I wish that more people would say nice things or not stupid rage bait, like nice bait or something. I don't know, maybe not even bait, just no more bait. Can we just all swim? We're, why are we trying to catch each other? Can we just all swim in the deep sea of the internet and just chill? Can we just, can we just chill? Can we just chill? Can we just, it makes me really sad when I see so much of it running around, of just like different people clearly trying to make a bag by making other people upset. It makes me sad, especially when they don't, when they don't believe it or they fall for it, you know? It's, it's tough, it's tough. I'm not falling for it though. I don't care. When I notice it, I just go ahead and log off. That's the way that I use Twitter now too. The second that I start getting upset on Twitter is when I should be like, oh, okay, I'm logging out. Suddenly I don't need Twitter anymore because that's not the goal. The goal is for me to use the app, but I'm not trying to get mad on there. I'm not trying to get heated on there because a lot of the shit on there, nobody really believes in. None of the takes, none of the art discourse, the discussions, nobody really even believes in the side that they're on. So what's the point of me talking about it, you know? Just rage bait, bro. It's, it's literally bait and I'm tired of falling for it. I'm tired of seeing other people fall for it. I wish that the internet was different, I really do. Even if these movies, shows, videos, and companies are upsetting me, at least they're not trying to take my money through ridiculous fees like something I know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> I should be directing all this anger at you. <laughs> yes, yes. Out of all the things I ranted about so far, you're the one trying to dip your hands into my and other artists' pockets. <sighs> well, I've got some words for you, buddy. I'm not biased to people who don't have iPhones, but it seems like Apple certainly is biased against their customers. But if you haven't heard, the App Store on Apple products um, has started to be weird about Patreon and Twitch's subscription-based services. Also, is Apple called Apple because of apps? Is that like what that was supposed to be for? It just, it feels like some monopoly shit. Like, what do you mean if an app that has nothing to do with you doesn't give you a percentage of their money, you'll just kick them off the app store entirely. And if you don't already know, that's kind of what they were doing. And apparently they tried to do the same thing with Spotify and Netflix of getting them to share a percentage of their subscription stuff and Spotify and Netflix took off the ability to subscribe or start your subscription based service on the phone. They're now trying to get on Patreon and Twitch for their monthly subscription based services and things like that. And Patreon, the thing that made me sad about Patreon is there were certain communities, there were certain people that are part of Patreon that were able to still hold on to the pay per project. So if somebody made a video, you would pay for that project through their Patreon instead of having to do a monthly service or anything like that. But they're getting rid of that because Apple doesn't want that. They only want monthly subscription-based services. That's what makes me angry. It's like, it really feels like you saw people getting their bag and doing their stuff and you wanted to get involved in that to some degree. And it's it's lame, it's silly, it's dumb. And it makes me wonder if Apple didn't give Patreon and Twitch much of an option on this to avoid the same outcome that Spotify and Netflix did of them just being like, okay, well, nobody can subscribe on the app anymore and they just have to go online or something. The phones already cost so much. Why are you adding so many additional charges to the apps I use? When I tell you that this is a huge percentage that they are trying to take out of Patreon specifically, I don't know how big it is on Twitch, but the percentage that they're doing would make a $10 subscription a month that is normally $10, it'll make it $14.95.
That is a big jump. That is a big jump. And it's all a fee. The fee doesn't even go to the person who has the Patreon, mind you. That goes to Apple through iOS. It is only if you subscribe through iOS. If you subscribed on your computer, if you subscribed on Safari or something like that, or just online off of the app, you won't have that fee. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that stupid? It, it feels like a monopoly. Apple's like, hey, you're gonna have to start giving us some money on what you're making. And that's really crazy to me. Y'all might be getting some of my money, but you're not getting all of it. And it just makes me upset. You are literally dipping into artist pockets when you do stuff like that. And for what? The phones are already so expensive. You already make me pay for more storage. You already make me pay or try to make me pay for Apple Music, but I'm not doing that. Just, I don't get it, I don't get it. Why do you want more money? You're being too greedy, shut the fuck up. Dismiss. <sighs> cool. I don't think I have any more pent up anger and frustration towards anything anymore. So that leaves more room for me to be relaxed and calm about this last topic, especially since I'm not mad at video essays at all. I just think they're neat. <laughs> It's really cute because like I can just totally tell when somebody who makes video essays liked to make essays at school or liked to write essays at school or was in AP in high school or something along those lines. It's, it's kind of easy to tell, you know? But it's really nice because now you get to do this thing and make this piece of work that you learned how to make from school. That's pretty neat. I wrote in a comment on a video by Jericho that the video essay makers are becoming the students and video essay watchers are their language arts teachers. And that's basically all that I have to say, like about this whole thing. Of course, people want to know like some sort or have some sort of personality in the information that they're getting about whatever topics that you're talking about. They don't want you to just be reading a Wikipedia page, just like your language arts teacher didn't want you to just be reading one. They wanted you to put your input into it. They wanted you to put your thoughts. How does this, this topic make you feel? How does this situation make you think? That's what people want to get out of their video essays. At least some people. I understand that other people are trying to look for videos that are good to look at when they're eating or look at while they're doing laundry or look at when they're doing stuff that they can't 100% focus in on, you know what I mean? So I understand that people would rather there be some sort of substance in there instead of you just reading off a book report that you obviously didn't write. Like, it's okay to put some level of entertainment or purpose into it. Even with what I'm doing with this video, I'm trying to put purpose and intention behind what I do, right? I'm trying to think of everything that would be nice and good for you as the viewer. When I, before I started, like full on getting into making this video, nobody was really calling it slop content or calling it fast food content just yet. But then it just started blowing up more that a lot of people were saying, oh, this is what classifies slop content or fast food stuff. And this is that, and this is this. I watch them all. I watch them all. I follow all of them motherfuckers that everybody talks about as being slop content. Whether they're slop content or not, I watch all of it. And I think it is a little bit of a problem. Yeah, they're kind of just saying the same thing over and over again, but it's something that I can listen to while I draw or something I can listen to while I'm folding clothes. Uh, jokes on everybody, I don't fucking fold my clothes. But they just call it slop content when it's videos that are of some guy giving their two cents on a topic or piece of drama at best, or have little to no substance or it's a waste of time and space in your brain at worst. I feel like there's slop videos, commentary videos, and video essays. I consider something a video essay or a film project when I feel like I shouldn't be doing an activity while watching it outside of like eating, right? It's a commentary video or a slop video when I feel like I can watch it without really watching it. Like they're not putting up a bunch of stuff on the screen. They're not really saying anything crazy. They're like borderline a podcast. So I can listen to it and absorb what's happening, but I don't have to actually look at it, look at it. But then there's other film things where there's stuff happening, there's visuals, there's, there's things going on for me to watch that I don't want to miss. So I'm not gonna go do this activity that will take me out of that moment. I wrote, there's so much art and original thoughts and projects on YouTube worth watching, but it seems like the algorithm wants users to focus on the dramas and allegations of the week 
again, going back to the whole thing of it pays to be upset on the internet or get people upset on the internet because they stay on the thing longer to be upset about it. But I have to train myself to not search or watch so much of this kind of stuff and instead watch things that have more substance and make me think. But I will say that there are times where I want to be educated and stimulated and there are times where I just want to turn my brain off. So the slop and commentary videos kind of help with that. Making a video with or without a script, going over a topic that you have some level of interest in, that's all our teachers wanted us to do in school. That was all that they taught me in school all the time, was just how to make stuff like this right now. But it would be over, sometimes it would, usually, it would be over topics that I didn't really care about though. So yay, I get to do this, where I talk about what I want. It felt more like a chore back in school, but if you've ever made a video rambling about something or PowerPoint gushing over your favorite thing, you've basically written an essay. I remember when I was in one of my AP classes, they made us write seven different types of an essay, and she made us choose one topic that we had to make seven different essays about. I chose plastic surgery, I don't know why. But I will say that being able to choose the topic instead of a topic being assigned to me or things like that, helped me to be more interested in what I was writing. And I think my teacher knew that, like if she had just forced us to write something on stuff that we didn't care about, and we had to write seven different essays on one topic and we didn't like it, chances are we're not gonna be interested in doing that crap. But it helped me to be more interested in writing essays in general. It was just really fun, so. And that's kinda how I feel about these kinds of videos, be it that it's like a no script and it shows thing, or it's very well scripted out essay, or it's just a memory log. Any of the stuff that I put on my channel, I feel very close about, and I think that what I did in my language art stuff, what I did in school, helped me to be good at this stuff. Like for real, it's nice to be able to use the skills and things I learned through school to help me in my personal projects like this and so many other videos that I've worked on. It's also nice not having the stress of it failing or getting a good grade on it. Nah, I switched that out for getting views and money and the stress that comes with that. <laughs> I love videos that document internet lore and history, but I also love that it's so easy to watch and listen to people's thoughts through YouTube videos. I love that so much. It's things and inputs and experiences that people will have that without the internet, without YouTube, without social media, we wouldn't be able to see them at all. We would have to just hope that we would see something like that from the people that are in our immediate vicinity or the people that are in our community, you know? But now with the internet, they don't even need to be in your community and they're a part of your community. And I love that about the internet. I love that about YouTube. It is the broadcast yourself thing. I know people just want to say that that's out the window and capitalism this and oh people just want to make you upset that but it's still there. There's still people out there using YouTube for what it was originally for, myself included. We as people experience so much in life and would do good in sharing those experiences and interests with others. It will connect us with someone on the other side of the screen for sure. I hope we're connected. I love that you can just get regular and spiritual news from all these different types of people on the internet. This one was just like a little fun point, just a little thing to note. I just thought it was funny. I had no idea that other people would stop watching a YouTube video just because the person's voice is not to their liking. That's really fucking funny to me because I'm in the same boat. I hope that my voice isn't annoying to people, but I understand you can't please everybody. But I know that if somebody's voice is too annoying or it does that lip smacking thing or whatever too much, then I will just not watch it with headphones in. I'll watch it out loud because I will significantly hear any issues with their voice a lot less than in comparison when I have it in my ears, you know? So that might be a pro tip if you're able to watch it out loud and you really want to like watch the topic that this person is talking about. I understand. I hate when there's a topic, like I really do want to talk about or hear this other person's input on it, but it's just not a good video. So, and I would, it would hurt if I come off that way to other people about the topics that I'm talking about. But hey, if I didn't do it justice or you had more things to expand on, make your own video. I promise you, it'll be really fun. It's really fun to make these kinds of things. Also kind of stressful, but still really fun. If I care about the topic enough, I'm gonna listen to them. I wanna know. All right, I'm pretty sure I've yapped enough in this video about all the different stuff. I very much appreciate it if you looked at all the topics or just certain ones. Thank you for listening to me at all. I hope it made you think. I hope it 
you learned something new out of it. I hope it didn't make you also as upset as I was about certain things, but I understand. It's a lot of upsetting shit in the world, man. At the end of the day, not many of those topics that I talked about really matter, or they're stuff that I don't have personal control over. It's okay to vent and rant about things that don't matter in the grand scheme of things. In fact, I'd encourage it. Nothing matters, but like, nothing matters. You know what I mean? I personally had to get these fussy feelings out of me so I could focus on the things that actually matter to me, which is conveying my message of experiencing life and cherishing the people you love and care about through my art and creations. I was finding it kind of hard to lock into that with all these thoughts floating around in my head, and I figured it would do more good to turn them into art or a project of some kind than to just let them take up space in my journal and Google Docs. It's taking up, I think this is like 11 or 12 pages. So, fun, fun, fun. But thank you again if you did listen to me. Like, again, I appreciate it. Your time is very valuable, and I'm happy that you chose to spend it with me and to talk about random shit with me. I appreciate that. Um, I don't typically make these kinds of videos where I'm fussing about trending topics or topics like that or things going on outside of my personal life, and I don't often make organized videos like this either. The last one that I made was over a year ago about Tame Impala to give you a sense of, yeah. I understand that the algorithm wants to keep us on the app longer, and it's shown that people stay longer when they're upset or angry over something. Well, here's my offering of rage of all the stuff that I'm mad at, so hopefully the algorithm is tricked into thinking that I'm playing along. But okay, if you're listening to me talk right now, please try to make an effort to watch things that aren't made to upset you or that are negative. Please make an effort to look at stuff that gives you joy. Please make an active decision to look at art and things that you enjoy. Drama will get stale to you eventually. I've noticed it. The more that I try to look at other small videos that are talking about different things going on or life experiences or vlogs or things like that that don't have anything to do with the allegations of the day or the drama of the week or the person who got outed as a pedophile this and this this and that the more that stuff feels stale to me the more that stuff feels undesirable to me in my brain i want to go look at stuff that makes me think and gives me substance i think the only way to escape this youtube meta of constant he said she said lunchroom arguments is to be aware that there's countless other corners of YouTube to get entertainment from. There is still art out there. There is still art to be found on the platform. People like to say that there's no originality on YouTube anymore. It is. You just have to go looking for it. You have to find it. But it's there. It sucks now. Like before, yeah, you wouldn't even have to go searching too hard for it. It would just be there. But now, since again, the algorithm rewards you for making people stay on the site, by making shit content or content that makes up people upset. There's a s oversaturation of that, not to mention there's just an oversaturation of AI videos or videos that are just made haphazardly to be pumped out seven times in a day. You have to kind of swim through that to find the art, but it's still there. It makes me really sad when people say that there's no art on YouTube or there's no art on the internet because it is. I promise you there is art out there still. Looking for you and you're looking for them. You just have to look. If you're looking for that kind of stuff and you stumbled upon my channel, like this is your first time here or whatever, I think it's safe to say you're going in the right direction. I love making videos like this. I love making videos in general really. So you'll find a good variety of stuff on my channel that I hope makes you feel something. That's all that I try to do with my videos is to make you feel something and to make you think. So hopefully I could still do that with this video, even though talking about shit that don't matter. <laughs> but thank you so much for spending some time with me, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you when our realities cross paths.